Hello everyone. My name is uh, Dr. Ravi Gadani and you may have seen the first video of uh, electives in CBME which means uh, what electives are and uh, you know how, how can they be created and what's the module of elective and uh, so that video was I had already uploaded. Now in this video I'm going to talk about how you can allot elective. So as we all know that uh, electives are compulsory for uh, MBBS batches. So what is going to happen is every department is going to create a uh, few electives and then thus we have we will have a large pool of uh, electives uh, in which uh, you know there will be few electives from surgery department, few electives from anatomy department, few electives from pharmacology department, FM and every single subject would have so we will have this large pool of electives for block one and electives for block two. Now how do we truly allot them? Uh, so so I'm just going to talk about the process that we followed at my medical college which is like at, at the medical college that I work at which is BJ Medical College Ahmedabad and we just believe that uh, it was a uh, you know it was slightly innovative process and it may help others. So with that in mind let us begin. So how to allot electives? So there are four steps okay so step one is to really get the merit list step two is to introduce the students to what are the available options for electives uh, step three is collecting the preferences which means that uh, you know after the students know that these are the options for block one and these are the options for block two how do we then collect their preferences step four is the actual allotment of electives so we'll look at these four steps there will be some, uh, we have used uh, um, online Microsoft form extensively. We have used uh, a Word document as in the Word software a lot. And uh, we have also used a mail merge function of Word. So you will just come to know as we progress. And if at all, uh, anything that doesn't make sense, you can really get in touch with me by posting it in the comment. And I will try to reply. Uh, there are some aspects of this video which will require further details which I would not really go in detail of which I may make another video about. So let's start with step one. So how do you create a merit list? So this is truly at the level of college. So uh, either the medical education unit of the department, you know, uh, eligible students who require, uh, they, they, they need to have a merit list. Like who would you ask first to choose the uh, electives from that available pool? So uh, the medical education unit can really gather up and they can have a meeting the, and the criteria can be decided. But you cannot just have cri one criteria because what will happen is if you just filter out people through one criteria, there will be more number of students who would stand at the same place after you filter them through one criteria. So then you want criteria two and sometimes even criteria three. So uh, they, so for example, like at our institute, what we kept was second mbbs university total theory marks that's what we kept as the criteria so what would happen is uh, consider there are thousands uh, is 1000 is the total uh, marks that somebody can get and so you may consider that there may be more than one student in fact we already face this a lot that 688 marks so there are more than two or three students at the 688 marks so how do you now offer them so what we did was we put the second criteria as age. Uh, you can as well put the second criteria as, a, you know, marks in a specific subject. But if you're keeping something like, uh, you know, second criteria like age, then why it is important is uh, if you have defined them, you know, uh, beforehand, then when you create the merit list, it will become easy. Because what happens is uh, when you get these uh, numbers, these marks from the, uh, you know, the UG office or if you get from university they come in specific format and a lot of time it requires entering all that data in the in an, another excel sheet and then sorting them according to columns which you have decided as the criteria so that is that it is also critical like then that is why i'm saying that it is very critical to decide this merit list criteria beforehand right so uh, that is one step two is introduction two options what it means is how do you introduce the students to various electives like how does the student know that what is on offer in department of surgery or what is on offer in department of anatomy 
or physiology or biochemistry or gynecology or pediatrics or what and, and each. So you want to create a mechanism by which the students will come to know about all the available options. It is like, you know, it is like a menu in, in when you go to a restaurant, right? And that is when the student will be able to make choice that, you know, what I want, uh, you know, my top choice is this and my second preference is this and my third preference is this. So the idea is that they, they need, they can make an informed choice when they fill out the preferences. So what we did at our institute is we created something known as a handbook on electives. Yeah. So what handbook on electives is, is actually it's a PDF file that was created. And what, how did we create? We'll go in details of that. But so we created that handbook on electives and then we circulated them in their WhatsApp group. We shared them in their WhatsApp group. They could just go through all and then they could jot down that this is what I really want to have as my elective. So basically it was a PDF file and it was shared with students on their WhatsApp group. They could just go through the entire book and note down their preferences. So first they would put note down anywhere maybe in their mobile phone in the in a simple piece of paper. So how did we create this handbook? So what we did was uh, we just created a rough, uh, uh, you know, structure of what information do we want to provide the student with. So consider that if a student wants to know that, you know, what are the electives in surgery, then we wanted him to know that, you know, the electives in surgery are, you know, maybe, and, and these are real ones, like one is what procedures, <coughs> excuse me, and the second one is uh, uh, introduction to basic surgical suturing. So what we did is, if he reads about those electives we did in a single page, he will come to know that what the elective's name is, uh, what can he expect to gain after attending that elective, right? Who's going to be, you know, how many seats are there for that elective? Who's the, and what's the code of that elective, right? So that I'll just talk about, but that is what. So that is how he sees one elective. He, he turns the page and he sees another one and the fourth one. And that is how he knows that I have these many electives that are actually interesting to me and I, I really want to jot them down. So when you want to create a handbook on electives, what's happening is you really want to go to the department and ask them that, tell us about your elective. What do you have to offer? So the department has to provide you with some information that you would then incorporate in that handbook. Now, in order to collect this information from the department, what we did was, we created an online Microsoft Office form. Now we have plentifully, we and most of you may be aware of Google Forms, which are like online forms. Uh, the same way Microsoft also provides uh, Microsoft Forms, which are like reasonably the same. Uh, why I chose or why we chose to go for Microsoft Form uh, was that the data you get is through in, in Excel directly. And that then can be manipulated, that can be uh, or I should rather say that can be, uh, you know, sorted, uh, that data, uh, you know, so, so that data is way much more flexible and it can as well be linked with another word file for mail merge. So an online Microsoft form was created. What all was included in that Microsoft form? So, you know, so, so, so let's just really get this clear. This form is to be filled by the department. So let's call that it is to be filled by the head of the department for each elective once. So if Department of Surgery is offering two electives, then uh, then the uh, head of the department or whoever is the you know assigned faculty will fill that form, this form twice, once for each elective. If any department is offering three electives, they would fill this form three times, okay? So for each elective, they would fill in the name of the department, which can be chosen from just a drop down menu. I'll just show you the form as well. Name of the HOD, uh, which is the block of the elective, which is block one for pre and paraclinical and block two for clinical. What is the name of the elective? What are the objectives of the elective? And mainly, this is the most important part, which is the description of the elective. What to expect when they go through that elective, what can they expect to get or learn? And what's the vacancy? So as we all know that electives, the department would decide that if I can take maybe five students in this elective or 10 students in this elective. So 
once this form was filled and i'll just show you what this form uh, you know really looks like so if you see this is the form for uh, elective so if you see the heading of the form it says that details of the electives to be filled by the department and then there are few instructions now if you see i told you the first field was name of the department so all they have to do is they just have to uh, yeah this will this will show better uh, they just have to choose their department so that is the name of the department the second part was name of the head of the department then block then they will uh, write the name of the elective the fifth part is objectives of the elective sixth is description and finally the vacancy and there are instructions which are given i will share the link to this form uh, uh, I, I must say that you cannot get the back end data of this form but looking at this form you can really uh, you know replicate similar info in another form okay so i'll share this in the uh, video description and once they fill in this form they submit it so this is what they have to do once for each elective now once this form was created a link from the uh, you know of this form was shared with the hod's and it is being emphasized again i told you that uh, this is to collect data to create that handbook okay because in this video i'm going to talk about two microsoft forms so i'm being very clear that this date this form is for the head of the departments to collect data so it is it needs to be filled by the hod and uh, once for each elective so if the department is offering three elective, fill the form three times. I think I'm pretty clear in that. Now, once the form is filled by each department, we will have the same number of responses as is the number of electives. Goes without saying. So once we receive those responses, the backend access is with us. So when we log in through the, the same Microsoft uh, Office uh, you know, account and we go through the form, we can look at the responses and responses, we, can get, we will gather the responses in the form of a Microsoft Excel sheet. So after we receive all the responses, what we did was in order to ease talking about a particular elective, what we did was we gave an alphanumeric code to each elective. So what happens is I don't have to really, so, so I don't have to really talk about, uh, you know, the long name of the elective, but I can just say that, you know, I chose to go in SU01 or SU02, right? So we took, like for example, if there are two electives from my department, which is Department of Surgery, we gave them code of SU01 and SU02, right? Uh, this code was mainly to ease the communication that this is now being talked about uh, like SU01 or SU02, the same way, you know, but, but it was alphanumeric and the uh, alphabetical, uh, you know, part uh, can easily be taken from the uh, you know, a competency booklet from the NMC because they also have used SU for surgery in the same way we used other, uh, you know, uh, like they have used IM for medicine. So we used IM for medicine in this as well. This is not like anything compulsory. You can use anything, but it is just to ease this entire thing. Now, what we then did was we went in a Word document and then we mail merged all that data. And, you know, this is what I was talking about that this may require another video to describe. But that is how we created, uh, you know, the, all that info was pulled into a Word document and then the Word document once created entirely, we exported that as a PDF and that is how we had the handbook on electives, okay? Now, once it was created, it was shared with the student on, the, on, on their WhatsApp and they could go through the handbook and they could jot down their top 10 preferences. I'll just show you what hand, our handbook looked like in a PDF. So you can see that uh, this is what our handbook looked like. This was the this is the first page, okay, and uh, then we had a from dean's desk. We had a small message by uh, our dean sir. Uh, then we had the content. So like which departments electives are on which page, and then if you look at this, this is like a generic one elective. So if you see, then uh, you know. You can see that there's a block one written at type uh, right top corner. Code is AN01. I told you anatomy has AN code even in competency booklet and we just continue with the same. So the topic or the name of the elective is medical genetics. Then there are objectives and then there are brief description. Okay, so I'll just magnify this for you. 
you can see this now that block one code is a n01 this code again i'm telling you it just we invented it i mean we just created it in order to ease the communication there's department of human anatomy uh, the topic is medical genetics these are the objectives this brief description and total seats are <clears throat> they are offering is eight if we go ahead if the student scrolls through it he'll go to anatomy what's the second uh, elective in anatomy then he goes to the third elective fourth then comes physiology so py01 and the same format so we created this structure to each page and each page will bear one details of one elective you can just go through and i think uh, uh, you know if we just go ahead you can clearly see this is medicine so department of general medicine uh, you know they had this elective on diabetology and uh, uh, that is block two now you can clearly see that block two is clearly written uh, diabetology these are the objectives and there's brief description total seats are 10 and the same way we can just go ahead now so i think i'm uh, clear in what the handbook on electives looked like so this was the pdf file that was shared with them this was created by us you know uh, getting all those responses from the departments now comes the uh, third step which was to collect the preferences now students already know that uh, these are the available ones and they have jotted down but how do we know so what is the mechanism to collect those preferences so uh, what it means is uh, you know as uh, uh, for post grad counseling when the students fill out their choices that my you know the first thing i want to do is maybe uh, medicine and the second is dermatology and the third is radiology uh, please don't look at the uh, you know the uh, preference because i just picked up any branches so the same way they need to give us their preferences so how did we collect them so collecting preferences from the students one for each so for block one also and for block two also right so this is similar to filling preference of a pg admission and for this also we created another microsoft form okay so i told you we'll be talking about two forms in this and that is why i just wanted to be clear that this is the second microsoft form this is to be filled by each student so this microsoft form for the you know uh, preferences uh, had these fields full name of the student his email or his or her email and mobile number and date of birth why did we gather this i told you that the merit criteria one the second merit criteria that we had created was age the first was of course the month and in order to calculate that age we need a date of birth so i told you that you need to fix that criteria earlier and beforehand so that if at all there is any specific info that you want to collect from the students you can collect it at the time of uh, you know uh, filling out this form or when the student fills out this form roll number as per the mbbs muster and then comes both the preferences so what we did was we actually had like this is one field this is the another one field one field each but for this block one and block two we gave 10 fields each so the student would be able to fill out choices like block one first choice block one second choice block one third choice up to 10 then block two first choice block two second choice block two third choice right so this is this was a long form and what we did was that in each of those choices we gave drop down menu so i'll just show you that form also okay so you can see this is the form okay this is the form of preferences for electives and this form is to be filled by students and you can clearly see that there are uh, you know clear cut instructions that uh, this is to be filled by the ug batch of entry in august 2019 and everything and other instructions now let us look at this so if you see uh, it requires like you know basic information full name email and mobile number and stuff okay uh, I'll have to go in uh, general mode because otherwise it will not allow me to go ahead. So if you can just see that there are full name and email and mobile number and date of birth and roll number as per the registrar and second MBBS university exam seat number. We wanted this so we collected this. Then comes preferences for block one. So now comes that question number seven you can clearly see here. This is seven block one first preference. 
Now, first preference onwards, you see this entire long list of all available electives in block one. Okay, so he chooses one from this. Then he goes to the next question. Block one, second preference. He again chooses one from this. And this goes on and on till block one, tenth preference is selected. So this is still block one, sixth preference. And uh, finally, I think uh, this is still block one. Then comes preferences for block two. I told you the exact same thing that the student did for block one, he does for block two. Ten preferences he is able to give. He just has to click. So he doesn't have to write anything. He just has to click. And if you look at how we have given them the preferences, you can see that preferences are also given, uh, you know, with alphanumeric code and the name of the elective. So if you look at it right here, so it is CM04 dash community clinic. I am 01 dash diabetology, right? Once he fills out all 10 preferences like this, and in the end, he will be able to submit the form. Okay. I think I'm very clear in this. So now what is happening is that uh, once this form was created, we actually uh, three or four faculties were sitting together. We were like really back testing the form. So once the form is created, it is given to another faculty and few students to fill out. And we could see so sort of a beta version and we could see that if there is any question that was addressed. That is when what we did was an introductory session was organized for all the students. So all the students of that batch were called into a lecture hall. It was like a physical session. This session was attended by students physically. And there were three things that we talked about. Firstly, we introduced them to what electives are and you know they, they knew a bit about it, but we introduced them to what electives are. We told them about the handbook of elective that you know there will be a handbook of elective which will be shared on your group which you can go through which was the second step in what we talked about and in filling out the form uh, which is the preference form which collecting preferences which is the step three what we did was we had created an identical copy of a mock form so it was the same form but it was duplicated that was shared with them in that session right right then and we, like we released that link in the in on their whatsapp group and we asked them to fill it like mock fill it, it like it would not matter but so that they they just pass through that entire experience of filling out the form so they don't make much of uh, you know any mistake when they fill out the real form both the forms were exactly the same except that this was for practice so, uh, you know, they were talked about the concept of electives. They were talked about that you will be given a handbook of, on electives, which will be shared in the group and you just have to go through it. And then there will be a, a mock form practice was done there and then during that session. Any questions were answered and the students were very clear that what is going to happen. Now, the students were asked to fill the mock form during the session only so that they, were, they would be more accurate at the time of filling out the actual form. Now, once the session was con conducted and there were no questions after a few days, uh, once the book was, was with them, the handbook was released and was with them for four or five days, the actual form from which we were to collect, which is like I told you, it is the same, just the link changes. Uh, it was shared on their WhatsApp group and they all filled in the form. So, of course, they were given a specific date that you need to fill it within seven days or within four days. Uh, just so that I mean many of you may be knowing that in online forms you can stop to collect responses so you can um, you know actually turn the responses off so even if somebody uh, you know fills the form and hits submit button it will not be you know uh, so 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 you can you you can make it time limited do I right so uh, you know you just don't have to worry about that you know people will keep on sending responses you can just turn off receiving responses so once all the students had filled the form, that is when you had access. Now, then what happens is, you know, on the back end, the way you get that Excel sheet data is like you get every single field as a separate column. So you'll get a column by of the name of the student and then maybe, you know, email ID and then mobile number and then date of birth and then second year university. A seat number and then roll number and then muster and then block one preference one block one preference two block one preference three so on and so forth so it will be a pretty long sheet but like that is what you get and that is where when you have all the responses all the preferences of all the students in a digital format 
right? So this was the step three, how we collected the responses, how we collected the preferences. I would just like to add one thing here. There was a question, there was a concern regarding uh, somebody filling out the form on behalf of someone, right? So how do I like consider my name? I am Ravi and I have a friend called Manish and I'm like, you know, let me just fill out the form on his behalf. I know all of his details because I know his name and know his email number, phone number. I know, uh, you know, his date of birth and reasonably everything else because there's nothing that is like a secret thing. So how do we overcome that? So there are two ways to overcome that. Number one is if your institute has a paid OTP service, which you have hired, then what you can do is you can just, uh, you know, ask them to send an OTP, which they will keep with them. Okay. It will not come at the time of filling the form, but they'll just keep it with them. And what you have is the backend data of that this mobile number has received this OTP today. And maybe even if they fill in the form after five days or seven days, they just have to fill in that OTP. But in which case you will have to make a field of OTP in that form, right? There's another easier way, which is not like OTP through SMS. What you can do is you can just consider you have hundred students. What you can do is you can create hundred closed envelopes with one written OTP inside. Okay. Uh, so it may not be a message, but like it, it's a physical, it's a paper on which there's written a, a, a five digit or four digit code. You can just put it inside a cover envelope, seal that cover and you know, just shuffle them around. Once you shuffle them, you can just serially write on the cover, on the envelope, roll number one to hundred, right? Or you can just, uh, uh, you know, uh, actually this may not work, but what you can do is you can pre-decide that roll number one is given a, 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 a four digit code of maybe six, four, three, two, right? And roll number two is given this, but when you hand them over, you give them in sealed boxes or sealed envelopes and you take their sign that you have given them. So what they have to do is they have to, when they fill the form, they just open that envelope up and fill that four, you know, four digit or five digit number that you have put. So this is also another method that we had created. But uh, luckily, uh, we didn't face any such issues and the students were already, uh, you know, counseled that we, you really want to fill out for your own self only. Finally comes the allotment. So now I think uh, this step is uh, a lot more physical because you cannot like do it uh, sitting online. I mean, it, that can be done with a software and stuff, but we, so what we had was we had all the preferences of all the students and we had so, so we had access to that on the back end and we had details of available vacancies. So you have preferences and you have vacancies. So what happens is now you go to the field, uh, you, you just have to really sort that data according to merit and stuff. Once, once those preference table, which is a large table, once that is sorted according to the merit list that you had created in the first place, once that is done, now what is happening is in the first row, you have the detail of number one who's standing on merit number one. So then you go through, you know, first preference, of course, number one will get whatever that person wants. Then you go to number two. So uh, this is something that can be done physically because now you have the preferences and then you have the vacancies. Maybe you can create a small paper like thing and you can check off or tick off <clears throat> the seats that are allotted. Uh, that can be done. Uh, so in one or the other way, two or three people can sit together and one person can shout out that, you know, number one, well, block one, he wants SU0, uh, block one, he wants AN01. So number two checks whether it's available or not. And if it is available, it, if it is given, we mark that on that sheet only. And the third person can just tick it off, tick it off that, you know, uh, AN01 had five vacancies, but now one is gone. So now four remain. This is slightly physical and maybe uh, slightly laborious. But I think the only other option is a proper software, which I believe that uh, is beyond, was at least uh, uh, not uh, beyond the scope of what we were uh, trying to do. So this is where you can just uh, match them and then you can just uh, allot the election. Now once, uh, the now what we did, even after that, what we did was, uh, and uh, this may interest some of you, that uh, once that allotment was done, we had created two tables one table was a large table in which uh, you know there was the way you would display merit list on the uh, you know or any other information on the college notice board you would have just uh, this name of the student and that student would you know there would be two more columns where the student's name 
allotted elective for block one and allotted allotted elective for block two. That is what we did. And secondly, we also did uh, made uh, custom orders for each student. So they were also made and they can be easily done through mail merge now. That's slightly tricky and I think this video itself is getting pretty long. I'm not sure how many of you would be holding up still now. Uh, but I think uh, that was there and then we also because we the data was in uh, you know Excel sheet we also uh, gathered the name of the students and sent it to each department that you know uh, like department of anatomy you will receive these students for uh, you know AN01 or this particular elective department of gynecology you will receive these students for your this elective and these students for your this elective so that is how uh, we had done. So I think uh, we did come up with something really ingenious and uh, we used these, uh, you know, uh, Microsoft Forms for, uh, you know, uh, a lot. Uh, maybe the Microsoft Forms may require probably 365 subscription, but Google Forms are free. What you can just do is you can just gather all the data in Google Form. Once everything is complete, you can convert that Google Sheet or copy that uh, data that you have received on the back end into a uh, Microsoft Excel Sheet and that then you can just take it from there. Uh, so with that, uh, I think I'll end. I'll I'll link up uh, all the, both the forms, and I'll also share a copy of uh, our handbook. If you can just if you just want to see it, how it is, uh, I may make a video around uh, how to actually create that. How I created that handbook from uh, the responses that we had create, we had gotten for the uh, electives. So I think with that I end. Thank you so much. Uh, if at all you're listening till now, uh, I create these videos around medical education as of now if you think you like that you may consider subscribing to this channel uh, if you have any specific comment you can really you you know uh, jot it, put it in the comment box i would really really love to hear from you so yeah that is that thank you so much for your patient listening thank you adios